Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Advisor with Stacey Chill. I mean, today I'm here with Scott Adams of Adams Consulting Firm. He is amazing when it comes to business consulting, and today he has a great idea that he wants to go over with you. It Through his knowledge over the years and expertise, he wants to talk about uh, business uh, decisions and how to make the right business decisions and why it's such a key to building a, a strong, profitable business. So today, um, Scott is going to talk about decision making and why it's so important to factor into your business. So Scott, it's a pleasure to have you back on the show. I love talking to you. You're just amazing when it comes to uh, business and business growth. And uh, you had mentioned quite a few things before the show that you thought was really important for business owners and entrepreneurs to really understand and grasp in order to grow and elevate to the next level and even 10x their business. You know, they have to really understand certain strategies and certain key components. Maybe you can tell everybody a little bit about yourself if they haven't heard any of your episodes and you know, and what we're going to be uh, talking about today because I'm really excited. Yeah, same here. Thanks, Stacey. It's great to be on the show again. Great to see you and have another wonderful conversation. Um, as far as myself, so I'm CEO, founder of Adams Consulting Firm. I work in a couple different capacities, uh, one being as a fractional COO to help companies navigate their respective spaces and to grow and scale accordingly. And also as a strategic advisor, again, kind of in the, the same avenues of things to uh, really help them make sure they're making the right decisions and targeting the right market and going through that process so that they're very efficient in what they do and very informed in what they do. Um, a lot of my focus these days is in kind of the healthcare, wellness and sports tech space. Um, but of course, these same principles we'll talk about today can be applied to really any other business. And I know we were talking a little bit before the show started, and it's one of the it, decision making is one of those key aspects of every organization, whether it's a small business, medium sized business, just starting, established. These are these decisions that you make every day really have an impact on everything from your budget to your revenue to how sustainable things are. So that's why I think this is an extremely important topic for us to cover and something I hear about. And um, even a lot of businesses don't think that they have an issue with decision making, but it really helps them go a long way. And as I work through them on different problems, a lot of times this really shows as the root of their overall problems from a company perspective. What are the start, some of the key components to decision making? Because I'm sure when you go into yeah. a business, you see some businesses struggling. You know, they're you know the way they look at decision making probably isn't the best way. So maybe you can go a little bit more into depth about uh, decision making and, and you know what's important to know and what's not important, and maybe some of the key elements of making good decisions. Yeah, and I I I like to kind of you know it's all in the framework, right? So mm -hmm. I like to go back to kind of the start and how you're thinking about your business and thinking about growing it exponentially from a 10x mindset. Mm -hmm. um, what that means is it's not just necessarily about growing things 10 times bigger. It's really about thinking 10 times bigger, right? Because right. it's very hard to make small incremental increases in your business. And this ends up taking more time. And it's really less efficient than having that bigger perspective. Um, you know, it's a framework overall for really ambitious goal setting and to really take bold action, right? And we're not meaning taking action that's uninformed or too too much risk in it. We're talking about making the right decisions, and that's part of what today is. Um, it really, the other thing it does, it really forces you to challenge your assumptions, right? We all have assumptions that exist, and we'll talk about biases and decision making a little bit later. Um but these are things we have to ask those questions to, right? Just doing something because you've been doing it for so long does is not the right answer. So you need to go back and kind of re-examine those things. Um, and again, the big part is to break away from that incremental thinking. Uh, you know, one step at a time is great, but if you could take a jump and get a lot farther with one action, it's a lot better in the long run. Um, I, from the overall perspective and applying this, thought process to the decision making is there's kind of three things as like a, the a theme to think about. The first being to think big and act decisively, right? Mm -hmm. um, you don't want to get bogged down by the uh, analysis paralysis, right? Thinking mm -hmm. about too many things, have, needing more information. 
you need to make your decision and go with it, right? And of course, you're making it as informed as you are in the moment. Um, but you can't look back, right? You have to go forward. If things don't go right, then you can learn and divert or change. But you, you need to, when you make a decision, you need to go with it, not kind of go half in, half out. Uh, another aspect is to embrace calculated risk, right? If Yeah. we're going to grow a business or if we're going to grow even ourselves personally, we need to make those steps outside of our comfort zone. And I know Mm -hmm. that's a scary place to be, um, but you have people that help support you through that. And by being informed and, and learning what we're talking about today will really help you to make those right decisions where being outside your comfort zone isn't as scary as maybe it was before because you you know going through the process, you've made the right decision. Um, and, you know, there's always potential risk with everything we do. So that's part of the consideration that goes on. Uh, and then, you know, the focus really on all these decisions you're making, whether it's your personal life, your business life, for your organization, for your team, you really need to be focused on the long-term game, right? Um, you have to avoid those short-sighted decisions because then you're just, you're really reacting in the moment and putting out fires, so to speak, that we know happen all the time. But what this does, it just, it prioritizes a quick fix versus a choice that, that supports long-term sustainable growth. So, You know, those are kind of the three key themes when we talk about converting to 10x decision making to help you move forward. I like that. And I especially like thinking about you don't have to be, you know, monetarily a 10x, but you have to think like a 10x. And I always, you know, I always like that concept because it always, I would always, you know, tell people, you know, think like you're a million dollar business. So what would a million dollar business do? And when you start to put that mindset in your head, you start to make decisions differently and you start to, you know, you're no longer like looking on the, you know, on the low end, but you're thinking on a much higher end, you know, and, and that goes all the way around from, from the way you run your business, from your brand into everything you do, you know, you, if you have that mindset of a million dollar business, you're going to re probably reconstruct almost your entire business when you, if you keep that mindset in, in, in your head and eventually it will pay off. Yeah, absolutely. And it's really funny how that works when it comes to time management. You Mm -hmm. you really think sometimes if you're taking that mindset of thinking yourself as a billion dollar business that you're going to need more time to do everything, right? Yeah. Mm But it really -hmm. has the opposite effect, right? By becoming focused and making these better long-term decisions, it Yeah. actually becomes more of a time saver, which again, Right. is a little bit disproportionate to what you would think, but Yeah. that's truly what it does. And I know, again, you know, creating something 10 times what it is today, you know, that that can seem really daunting, right? It's kind of like telling someone, hey, I got to lose 30 pounds, right? That that sucks. It's hard, right? It's a lot Yeah. of steps in between. But if you really focus it, at, and again, that's the same when we're talking about that decision making too, it's the same process, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm Um, hmm. but sometimes even though you're 10x focused, Mm hmm. the you only have to really think about making yourself 1% better every day to achieve Right. that. And when you think about that, that seems really small. It seems doable, right? I can, hey, Stacy, do you think you can get 1% better today? Right? Right. Mm Yeah, hmm that seems pretty easy. I just do maybe one thing different. Um, Right. and But those add up over time, which people kind of forget. Yeah, definitely. And that's a great point. You know, you only have to make small tweaks and eventually it all builds up. And then before you know it, you're actually you've made a lot of changes in your business and, 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 and it's still going to start showing and you're going to start improving overall in many different areas as well. Yeah. And that, and again, that's all comes down to decision-making. Like you said, when you think about yourself as a million dollar business, you become a million dollar business and you're Right. making those decisions based on being a million dollar business versus being a hundred dollar business. Yeah. And it, and it's a huge difference. And again, we're just talking about changing something 1%, but it's that mindset of what that decision is that makes all the difference. Oh, 100%, 100%. Now, what are other key factors when it comes to decision making that people should keep in mind? Yeah, I think one of the biggest thing is to understand kind of like everything when we're looking at data and making, you know, decisions in life or analyzing anything is there's always bias built in, right? And there's a lot of bias when it comes to decision making. Um, and there's, there's sometimes a combination of these and there's sometimes one versus something else. So uh, there's four that I want to talk about today. 
Uh, mm -hmm. One, first one being confirmation bias, right? Mm -hmm. What that is, is, you seek out information that confirms your existing beliefs, right? right. So, you know, if, if you have a new product and you think it's going to have this great positive outfit output, and, you know, we do this with our internet searches too sometimes, right? If we're looking for information, we're going to find it. So mm -hmm. if you're focused on something that you think is true and you're looking at more information to prove that you're right, you're going to find it. Right. Um, so this is something in decision making you see all the time. You see executives use this because, um, hey, I think this is the right thing to do um, because I read this one article that said to do this, right? This is how I improve. And mm -hmm. that's not always the case. So that's one form that we see that comes into play a lot. Uh, second being anchoring bias, mm -hmm. uh, which kind of think of your boat in the water, right? As soon as you set that anchor off, you're you're there right? You're shut down, not moving. And yeah. anchoring bias is an over-reliance on whatever that first piece of information you hear is, right? right. Um, you see this a lot when you're, you know, looking for a house or even car shopping, right? right. The first mm -hmm. thing you hear really sticks. And um, that becomes the thing that you go off of over and yeah. over again. Um, another way we see this in business, when you're talking with one of your suppliers or hiring somebody or even being hired, right? As an employee being hired, yeah. whatever, whatever, when you're talking about like salary negotiation or a price of anything, whatever mm -hmm. that first number is thrown out there, that becomes the anchor, right? Right. But we, the anchor could be completely incorrect, right? Yeah. You know, so you could go into a job thinking that you're going to, you know, make a hundred thousand dollars and the anchor they threw out there is 60. Well, now yeah. most people are negotiating off of 60 instead of resetting that anchor. So the same thing happens in business with your with your vendors, right? Um, just think about those conversations maybe you've had over the last week and think about is, was there something thrown out there right away that then mm -hmm. became the center of the conversation versus exploring everything else? So that's right. the second one. Uh, a third one is just, you know, typical loss aversion, right? Where the fear of the loss outweighs the potential gains, right? If I, if yeah. this doesn't work, uh, what's going to happen? Well, you know, I lose money, this happens, all that's there. But there, you know, you also have to, you know, no risk, no reward, right? And no decision right. is ever 100% foolproof. Um, even the easiest decisions at time are not 100% foolproof. So this is always yeah. going to come into play. Um, I see a lot of businesses do this when kind of they avoid bringing new technology into the business mm. um, because, you know, hey, something something's going to be a little bit different. Maybe it doesn't work as well. Let's just stick with what we have. Right. But the benefit of implying a new, putting in a new tech system is going to far outweigh what that risk is. But sometimes people are so focused on the loss. Um, and it's tough. I mean, we all do this in our lives, right? This it's something yeah. easy to to gravitate to because sometimes you just feel like status quo is better than potentially going backwards. But yeah, um, sometimes to get five steps forward, you got to risk maybe going one step back. So right, important part. the la The last one is one that you know, election is coming up, and mm. uh, you see this in government all the time, right? The sunk cost fallacy, right? Mm -hmm. So. What this is, is you continue to invest in something that's not working because you've already spent money on it or resources or time, right? Yeah. Um, I, I can't say how many times this happens, right? You, any, any time in business, even in your own life, right? You've put money into something and even though it doesn't work the way you want or maybe the outcomes aren't there, oh, shoot, I already spent money on it. I, I just got to keep going with this. Like I've already put so much time and effort into this. If I turn around, it seems like I'm quitting. Um, you know, it seems maybe I'm seems like I'm giving up or I wasted money. But yeah. again, a lot of times if you keep doing this, um, this is this. Well, I'm not going to say a lot of times all the time. If you keep doing this, um, yeah. this is worse. So I, I see these four things coming into play all the time in uh, businesses. And I'm sure you see it too, working with personal clients. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, a lot of people, they, cause they've invested so much time into either a, a, a software, a person, a product, you know, it, after, you know, the, you know, spend so much time to build it to a certain length. And then all of a sudden it's, it's really hasn't been bringing in the company a lot of profit. 
it's hard sometimes to, to let go because they've invested all this time. But if you continue, you know, most likely you're just going to, it's going to, you know, going to continue to lose money on it, you know? Yeah. So you have to really step back and think, is this really worth it? Is it, has it helped me since I started, you know, and, and then look at things on a more realistic basis. Yeah. You, you wouldn't keep uh, fixing a car that keeps breaking down when it costs you more to fix it than it would be to buy a new one. So it's the exactly. same, same principle to think about. And again, I know sometimes those, the next step costs are high and a little bit yeah. hard to swallow, but when you really look back at what's going on versus what can be, it yeah. really paints a more clear picture. Definitely, definitely, hundred percent. Now, were there any other specifics for key key decision making that you felt were really uh, important to talk about? Yeah, I think it's imp important that we just kind of roll through the biases to, to just okay. you know make people aware of them. It's kind of like taking the blinders off a little bit. Yeah, um, I do see four common mistakes that companies make. Um, obviously, those biases kind of reflect in these, um, yeah. but these are all, they're also a little bit different things. So the first thing I see is they really fail to define clear objectives, right? Mm -hmm. What are you trying to gain out of this decision you're making? What's the clear purpose? Yeah. Um, and what previously has led to whether it's scattered results or wasted efforts and resources, right? right. So um you know, I think you see this a lot in marketing campaigns from you're launching a new campaign without really defining what you're going after, right? Is the, Are you looking for brand awareness, lead gen, sales, right? Having that focus helps you make that decision better. A lot of businesses right. are just like, no, we got to do marketing, right? We just got to put it yeah. out there. But if you're not focused on a particular objective that you're trying to solve, improve, you're not going to get the results you want. And that's, again, where we come back to those wasted resources and not being efficient yeah. with it. So that's the one thing we see. The second is really ignoring data in, in insights, as mm -hmm. I can try to get that out and say it. Um, a lot of times, and again, sometimes it's the right thing to do, but um, you know, a lot of times people and business leaders rely on their gut versus data-driven analysis, right? And I'm not saying it's fully data driven, right? Because there is a right. component. Sometimes you got to go on a hunch, or sometimes if something doesn't feel right, you you got to go in that direction. You got to you know learn what your body's saying because that's intelligent too. But you yeah. also have to take in the insights of of what's going on. Um, I, I'm going to steal an example from sports because that's a heavy my background. You see this going on in baseball today. Um, yeah, everything's about metrics, right? Mm -hmm. And what does the data say? And shifting players to certain spots because hitters hit that way or what pitch you're going to bring in based on metrics, right? Right. Th th this is something that, again, we all know in business, um, businesses that have been around forever used to just go on gut feelings all the time. And yeah, they've gotten smarter over time with their different analyses and bringing in data and even bringing in people to help them make those decisions. Right. The smaller businesses may not have the data or may not have good data. Right. So they're trying to trying to figure out how to do that, but they're just making gut decisions. And that sometimes leads to, again, when you roll into those four biases we just talked about, that's yeah. when the decision making falls off. So you, you get poor decision making that way. Um, a third one mm -hmm. that we see all the time is lack of communication and alignment. Right. Mm -hmm. Businesses, unfortunately, a lot of times, and this is what I help to break down, too, is decisions are made in silos right? Yeah. Whether it's the C-suite making the decision, whether it's one department making a decision, when these are made in isolation, yeah. once that gets communicated out to the bigger group, it really, mm -hmm. it just creates confusion and hinders execution, right? Because no one knows where in the world this this came from. Right. Um, a lot, uh, I've seen this a lot in uh, my past between sales and say the tech team or product team, right? Yeah. Where, Sales is going out there, doing their thing, selling something to the client. Product yeah. team is working on improvements that they feel are necessary. But the problem is the new, the clients don't want that. So yeah. there's a little bit of bad decision making there, wasted efforts and time again. Um, the fourth one, we talked about a little bit with that risk aversion and that loss aversion, but yeah. overlook, overlooking opportunity costs, right? Considering... Right. Well, not considering really the potential benefits of making these alternative choices. Um, right. Because again, sometimes, again, like that old car, right? 
uh, you got to keep fixing it and you got to keep putting oil in it because there's an oil leak and you're spending money. Um, so if I don't make the decision to f either fix the car the way it should be fixed or get a new car, I Yeah. still have to keep spending money doing that other stuff. And Right. you actually, you're again, you're wasting money and resources um, by not doing that. So that's from the opportunity cost. And sometimes it's not that, right? Sometimes it's, uh, hey, if we were going to change this, uh, we could potentially bring in more revenue, right? Right. If we, we scale the company and take the next steps, hey, we can have 100x on our revenue, uh, Yeah. which, improve, which improves our profit, what we're paying everybody, and all of those things. So not making those steps, you miss out on those things sometimes. Yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. Definitely. I feel, I feel like it's really important, you know, to, to keep track of these things. So I think sometimes people also, when it comes to decision-making, keeping track of data, I think sometimes, you know, a lot of small businesses, especially they, they don't keep track of data, you know, the way they should, and they're not looking at the, the metrics consistently, and they're not looking at their bookkeeping and numbers consistently, you know, um, yeah, it, they, they show a lot of times that a lot of small businesses tend to be very bad when it comes to bookkeeping, they don't realize the importance of it. And, you know, that all interferes with your decision making too, I think. Yeah, it definitely does. And that's a great point that you just made. Documenting it is huge, right? Even if you were to create a journal of your decisions um, Yeah. and keep that and reflect back upon it at times, like just, Mm hmm just simple, like write the date, write what the problem was, the decision you made, and Right. some rationale as to why you did or didn't make the decision, right? And maybe every quarter, look back and Yeah. see what held true. And if your assumptions were right, and you can start to identify because, you know, it's human nature. Typically, people have certain blinders on and mine might be different than yours. So Yeah. the biases that are incorporated in my life are going to be different than in your life. But Yeah. if you're documenting these, you're right. You can start to figure out, hey, there's a pattern. I tend to overlook this. So Mm that hmm moving forward, you can spend a little extra or pause for a moment Yeah. and say, hey, let me kind of take a look at this quickly. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Now, are there other key components of business making and when it comes to making decisions that companies tend to overlook or they don't do or they maybe make, you know, previously over and over again? Yeah, the, those are the ones I see over and over again that continue to happen between the biases and those last four that we talked about. Yeah. Now, you know, I get, the question then comes in, well, what do I do to make those better decisions, right? Yeah. Um, Mm hmm that's a lot what I work with my clients as, as a fractional COO or strategic advisor. Mm Um, hmm and here, if these are some things that we look at or I work at, look at with the clients that I have to... educate them on how to make the right decisions and how people listening to the show today can also start to implement some of these as well. Yeah. Um, you know, the first is strategic alignment, right? So adapting that 10 X mindset, right? Clarifying those strategic objectives. Like what is our company trying to get to the next six month, one year, five years, Yeah. 10 years, right? Um, and develop a roadmap on how you're going to get there. And we all know things change over time. Technology changes, our thoughts change, our objectives change, but map those out um, Yeah. and, and really work as you divide that map and also try to determine a, a plan of how to get there and what do we think could go wrong, right? What potential roadblocks come about and start to develop those contingency plans ahead of time, right? Because Right. As you all know, with any emergency preparedness, uh, you, if you have a plan ahead of time, your your chance of survival is much higher. And that's Yes. the same with your business, right? So Mm -hmm. developing that plan for if everything looks good, what does that look like? And developing that plan for the things that we can foresee that could go wrong. Yes. And again, we, we talk about AI a lot uh, together. And this is something, too, that AI can help you. You can put your business plan in and ask it, you know, what are potential... Uh, issues that we could come across and Right. have it make up some scenarios and go through that exercise of, okay, here's a, if this happens, here's the four steps we take. Right. Right. And that's just effective planning. So having that strategic alignment, the roadmap and what the risk could be, if Mm you hmm have that in front of you, when you're making those decisions, you'll make much better decisions because you're not making them based solely on gut feeling. 
Yes. You're not making them on that incremental step up, right? You're thinking yes. long-term here. So that's item one. And there's four that we kind of go over here. Um, the second, again, data-driven data decision-making, right? You talked about this too. Let's implement KPIs, right? Key performance indicators or whatever you want to call them. Everyone calls them something different, but what yeah. are the maybe three things that we have to keep our pulse on constantly with our business? Um, right. And again, depending on the business depends on what those are. It's not always yeah. sales, right? It's It right. could be something else that you know, hey, these are the magic three things if we have happen, lead to increased revenue and increased profit. So keep your eye yeah. on those or these things can be measured daily or weekly versus longer term. And when these go off kilter, then we know our quarterly revenue has a chance of going off kilter too. So um, implementing those and, you know, analytics is important. Market research is important too, right? What are yeah. other companies in the same space doing, um, whether they're doing it right or wrong uh, mm -hmm. to get that idea? And again, the internet is a great resource. So that information's out there. So take some time and, and do that market research before going on that next journey and taking that next step to make that decision. Because um, right. that's going to help you you know, gain that insight in the long run. Because again, we want to get away from making decisions in silos, right? That's why we add yeah. data. That's why we add outside insights. That's why we talk to people. Um, and we want to get away from that process. And really building that data-driven culture really obviously helps with data-driven decision-making, right? If you're asking yeah. your, your employees and your staff these questions about their data, that's going to yeah. create that culture where that becomes a normal process in what you do. Um, the third of the four is optimizing the decision process, right? Create a structured and efficient process where you, where you do these things. So mm -hmm. um, step one in that is to define clear roles and responsibilities. I do have to say, again, I've worked with a lot of companies. Um, Intel is one that has done this better than any other company that I yeah. went, went through, right? There's always a decision maker and you can find frameworks out there on, on what works best yeah. from your company, but there's always one person responsible for making that final decision. Yeah. Um, and that's important as you go through. Again, it's not always the top of the organization, right? It might be who's responsible for that area or department or task that is yeah. making that decision, but you need to lay those out so that you don't have five people trying to make a decision and they all think they have the final answer. And then once yeah. someone doesn't disagree with it, then you have some distension in, in the organization, right? So right. that's important. Um, streamline those co communication channels, right? You want to always be open and transparent with the process behind it. Yeah. Uh, why you're doing it, you know, why you came up with the decision, what data did you take in? What other thoughts did you take in? This will just help to build buy-in and, really help sometimes even if it's not the right decision just the fact yeah. that people know that you went through a process and you were thoughtful in the approach yeah. sometimes that just makes all the difference in the world because no matter yeah. how good you do these steps how good you remove bias you're right you're not making the right decision all the time right, right? there's still going to be wrong decisions and that's okay um and there's like we said there's different frameworks to utilize if you want but i always say figure out a process that works best for your company or yourself and yeah. make that the process, right? Don't try to fit a square peg in a round hole by taking something someone else has done. Do what's going to work for you. Right. Um, and the fourth we talked about already is just to really overcome the biases. Um, yeah. sometimes, sometimes it's as easy as recognizing it could be there and having a discussion about it. Like, let's yeah. talk about sunk cost fallacy. Like, are we not making this decision because we've already spent resources on this and, right. and talk through that. Right. So those objectives, objective discussions can help one kind of flush through those things that, you know, are blind spots, but two, it can also one, uh, two, it promotes critical thinking, right? Yeah. Um, three, it might spawn new ideas because now you've had right. a different discussion that you didn't have before. And the fourth thing, which is my favorite out of all of these as to why overcoming biases and having the conversation helps is yeah. it creates a culture of psychological safety, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If we can make sure everyone feels comfortable in expressing their opinions, even if they're objecting on what we're doing or they're different or they're pushback, right? Or devil's advocate, right? You hear all those terms thrown around. Yeah. It, it's going to bring that that wonderful culture into play. Uh, where everyone feels safe to share it. And you're going to get the best decisions when everyone feels safe to share.
Oh, a hundred percent. I and I, I think it's if you know positive feedback and given given being able to express your feedback to one another is very important. I think it's a critical role when it comes to being able to have make good uh, decisions within the workforce because if you're not able to feel safe expressing your your feedback or expressing your thoughts, then good decisions aren't going to come about because you're not going to be able to, you're going to have that lack of communication, which is, it could be a very dreadful, um, you know, outcome at the end. Yeah. And I was talking to a business owner earlier today, and that was one of their things that they talked about is how do I grow a company fast, but at the same time, prevent these splinters in the company culture from happening, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So th this was a huge part of that is understanding the decision-making process and how getting everyone involved in the communication of it is essential because that way you build those trust bridges, right? And yeah. people feel like we just talked about, people feel safe in the process and you get more out of them that way because you're showing them a level of trust and understanding and yeah. they're showing it back to you. And you know, which we, we've talked about this, and I think almost all of ours, how much people are at the center of all of this, even though we talk about data di driven decisions, creating a process, right, there's still people are still the center of all of this. And yeah. being being able to pull a team together, uh, and make these right decisions, create that culture, is really what separates failing businesses sometimes from good businesses and great businesses is yeah. just that culture and bringing people together. And the, the one thing that I really like from this business owner that I talked about today is he fully acknowledged, he said, hey, I know that I don't know everything and I want to hire people in these other areas that are that would teach me how to do this. Right. Right. And mm -hmm. that I don't hear that very often. And that was something that was very, you know, showing on what a leader he is by yeah. saying those things, right? Because when he's going through his decision-making progress process, right? He's already mm -hmm. established a process where I want the smartest people I can in the room to help yeah. make those decisions. So that carries through uh, company culture, investment in your employees and the loyalty you build too. Right. A hundred percent. And, and, you know, I think it's important that leaders also try not to be bosses, but try to be mentors. And I think that that's a significant role that they, they have to undertake, I think. Yeah, for sure. Um, they, they do. They have, they have to help everyone else grow. And the other problem, again, the same business leader I was talking about, right. He's looking to scale his company quickly because of the technology and the nature of the business. And one thing I talked to him about when, when it comes to scaling is whatever process, say, him and I are going to go through to make decisions on things, mm -hmm. we can take that process and teach it to the next level of our team, right? right? The head of each department, how they go through decision making with us is the same. And then they yeah. bring that down to their, their team and they mm -hmm. make decisions in the same way. So you have an entire company making decisions in the same way. Yeah. which it helps you scale faster and keep that consistency. And it also prevents that siloed approach and from people going rogue mm -hmm. in how they're making their decisions, right? So it keeps everything yes. together and it allows you to scale up and scale down very efficiently because again, you know, everyone's following the same process. So yeah. he, the, the other worry, and Stacey, I know you go through this too, as a business owner, right? You can't make every decision. Right. Yeah. It's impossible and it's not sustainable long term. So there's to your team members need to make decisions on their own. That's affecting your business and a part of the business. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what we talked about today is, hey, if we can teach people this process, then we know that they're being thoughtful about the approach. And that's all we can ask. Right. They're yeah. they're still going to make mistakes. We're going to make mistakes. But the approach is there and it's thoughtful. So you're building up what they can do and empowering them uh, over making those decisions too, which help the business owner be a little bit more sustainable, get to focus yeah. more on strategic initiatives versus, you know, doing the day-to-day -day things that they really shouldn't be doing. Right. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Yeah. I think those are all good points. I, I think, you know, people have to keep that in mind too. I think these are, you know, when, when it comes to decision-making also, I think you pointed out a very good point is that it can't just be, the leader who makes all the decisions he has to be able to take a you know to teach and then take a step back and delegate and let 
his teammate uh, members be competent enough to take what they learned, utilize it, and start making you know some decisions for the company as a whole because that's what's going to make the company grow. I think quicker. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And again, like if you're the business owner, you may not be the marketing expert. So right. to instill your trust in the team that you've brought in to do those marketing decisions, knowing that they're going through, you know, a process to get there is really mm -hmm. helpful. It gives the business owner peace of mind as well. Yes, 100%, 100%. Now, are there anything, any other components that you find very uh, beneficial for, for people to know when it comes to making decisions within the workforce or within the company? Yeah, no, I think that's a lot covered. Right. There's a lot of information in a little time. And I know I threw a lot out there. Um, again, I think the important part when you want to take a look at the big picture is understand, just put a process in place. Right. right? When you're making decisions, take that 10x mindset, because, again, mm -hmm. it's going to be so much more advantageous in the long run. And again, yeah. I think in, I don't know, Stacey, you might remember this stat, but what 90 percent of businesses fail within the first five years or something like that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that that's part of it, right? Because they're making gut reactions and poor decisions and they have to go back. So put a process in place, teach that to your team, right? Teach that process so they can utilize the same process in what they do. And yes. again, realize there's blind spots. And yeah. instead of ignoring them, just talk about them, right? Because that one gets it out there um, and it builds that culture of, of psychological safety too. And it's amazing where something that it, you would take as very small, like a simple decision. Yeah. And again, in our personal lives, I don't remember what the number is. We make thousands, sometimes tens of thousands of decisions a day. Uh, yeah. And of course, you're not going to go through all these when you decide, hey, you know, what pant leg do I put on first or what shirt mm -hmm. am I going to wear? Right. But when, yeah. you're, when you're dealing with a business, these these things are important. And sometimes yeah. the smallest decisions maybe have the, the larger impact because, again, you create a decision in a silo and the, the spawn of what that has from um, questioning your leadership, putting a fracture in your organization, people not feeling safe, sharing their opinion. It has yeah. a big, profound impact. So, um, again, some, a, probably a really boring topic for a lot of people, decision making, but it has so much value in what you do day to day, to day and so much yeah. value in ensuring your business can be successful. I think especially with law firms, a lot of them are successful because they do a lot of um, group um, meetings where they welcome ideas into it. You know, what about this case? What do you think about this? You know, and other yeah. lawyers will input their their input of what they think would be good for the case. And all those things are taken and, you know, and their 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 thought or their plan changes, you know, according to like all the different ideas and what they think probably would be the best thing. Because a lot of times one person can't think of every right decision to make. It's yeah. just virtually impossible. So when you have a group of people that can actually communicate and not be afraid to express their decisions and, you know, and, you know, what they think would be good, you actually, you can really gain a strong workforce that actually can produce a lot of great things. And I think, I think it's really important. All the factors you mentioned today, I think are, are really important things to keep in mind and, and also to put into your, your, uh, your company and, and maybe change the way you're doing things because, you know, as time changes, so does, you know, everything else. And, you know, the way you make decisions has to be changed too, because, you know, we are a, a change in, you know, um, world and, you know, change is consistent and, you know, so sometimes our decisions have to change also. Yeah, uh, very well said. That's spot on the point. And you're right, it's, it is a changing environment and it is dynamic. Um, I I say too, and I say this very affectionately because I feel I'm one of them, but I say when I'm making decisions and getting a team together, I really want to assemble the land of misfit toys, right? <laughs> I, I want to get so many, I want to get people from such different perspectives that mm -hmm. whatever biases I have, the team around me sees those differently than I do. Right. Yeah. And their input and their their angle that they look at things is so different than what I do. And that's really what makes a team strong and yeah. a decision strong. Right. Um, so, yeah, I, I say look for your land of misfit toys uh, when yeah. you're creating a team and making those decisions. 
No, I agree with you. And, and you see even today, like the young, younger generation, they come in with a totally different outlook, but a lot of their decisions are really good. And they see things from a totally different perspective than how we see things sometimes. And, and that could be for, you know, very good, but, you know, that could work well in, in terms of business, you know, to be able to see it from different, different standpoints. And, you know, and a lot of times, you know, you have to just be open, you know, and I think sometimes, you know, that's a problem where people just, they're not open to change. They're not open to, you know, but it's when you're open to change and you're open to like, you know, listen to others is, is when good things start happening for sure. Yeah. Yeah. If you're, uh, if you're a plant living in darkness, you're not going to grow very big. Right. But when you open yourself yeah. up to the world, it gives yourself that chance to to grow and become a, a strong tree or a beautiful flower or whatever that is for sure. Yes, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Now tell everybody about the different services that you provide. Yeah, thank you. Um, I do a couple different things and of course those will change depending on the business and what needs are, but I tend to work from two different avenues. One is a fractional COO, uh, mm -hmm. especially with companies that are looking to scale. Um, right. They don't always need that full time COO support, right? Yeah. Because they are scaling and growing, but they need someone to help with, like we talked about today, that strategic decision making or company yeah. culture or what are the steps to take um, or operational improvements to take to get to that next step. So yeah. they uh, they can hire me at a, at a fraction of what they normally would. Uh, COO. And of course, you're hiring someone as a fractional COO, you don't pay benefits too. So you're usually mm -hmm. getting somebody with, you know, 30 to 40% of the costs of a full time COO. But you're probably also getting someone with twice as much experience as you'd be able to afford in that role. So it's, it's a win for the business, because they get someone with that ability to make those strategic decisions with them, and yes. help educate them along the way so that they're not left behind. And it's not just a transactional thing, right? There's growth that goes on with this and learning. Uh, so I'll work with that capacity or just a strategic advisor. Um, right. Or you can hire me to come in and I'll, we'll work on specific things together. Or even if it's just plug me into your quarterly meetings and let me yeah. listen, interact with you before and after, and maybe ask those questions to your team to kind of foster those growth. So those are the two main ways I, I work. Uh, ultimately, I just, I love solving problems and help yeah. the companies grow in scale. So that's usually the, the form it takes on. I love it. Now, where can people find you? Yeah, best place to look um, is adamsconsultingfirm.com. Uh, you can book a free consultation through there. Uh, it'll have links to my LinkedIn and email and all those things from there. Unfortunately, part of being named Scott Adams means it's hard to Google um, or just look on LinkedIn and find me. So adamsconsultingfirm.com <laughs> is the uh, the best place to go. I love it. Well, this has been amazing, Scott. You know, like always, it's great to talk to you. You have such great business advice. And I love, you know, I love today's conversation because, you know, decision making is so crucial when it comes to growing your business. And like you said, like 90% of the, you know, most businesses don't make it past the first five years, you know, so you really, you know, it tells you right then and there, you know, their decision making needs a little help, you know, a little uh, tender love and care. But, you know, with the, with the right help, the right, person guiding you and 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 showing you how to make decisions you could have a thriving business and and you know things could turn around for companies very quickly you know um it's amazing how you know i've seen companies go from struggling to thriving within a short period of time just by implementing some things you know some small changes into their company so it's it's something that you know you know business owners and entrepreneurs don't have to give up hope if, if things aren't going you know a hundred percent because just you know talking to a professional professional and just getting the right guidance and them helping you, you know, develop a, a crucial plan and, and showing you how to do things differently can make all the difference in the world. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I've, I've worked and seen with companies that have gone from bankruptcy to multi-million dollar profits in a year and a half. Right. right. And it is possible there. Are, there's many different ways. And like you said, those small changes and a small investment sometimes has huge gains that can really yeah improve your trajectory of your business in your life as well. A hundred percent. Well, this has been great, Scott. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. I really enjoyed today's talk and I look forward to talking to you more in the future. Yeah, the pleasure's all mine. Thanks for having me again, Stacey. Always a great time. Yes, same here. You have a great day. You too.